Thank you so much for joining us. So can you tell the congregation who Lele is, um, how she joined Jubilee, how long she's been part of Jubilee? Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, I greet you in the name of Palm Sunday. Um, my name is Pumelele Mbata. I am originally from KZN. I uh, have just completed my honors at UCT. Um, and yeah, I've been in Cape Town for five years. I joined Jubilee 2021. We were still online and doing life groups over Zoom calls. Um, so yeah, I just went on the website. I left my previous church and I was in a really dark time in my life. Um, and yeah, I was like, okay, let me join a life group. So I joined a life group over Zoom and then we, I think at the end of the year, we moved to doing uh, church in person. And then, yeah, I was able to really plant roots in this amazing community. So, yeah. Amazing. We love having you here. So some of you might know that currently we're going through a series called Surprised by Jesus. And before that, we're looking at the Book of Romans. And one of the challenges that Darren gave us from the Book of Romans was for us to read the Bible in twos or threes. So Lele is one of the, one of the people um, that decided to start um, this challenge or take up this challenge. And she's going to share with us how Bible reading was before she started doing it in twos and threes and how that has changed since then. Yeah, so like everyone here, um, the Bible in its entirety always felt a bit daunting because I was like, oh my goodness, it starts all the way in Genesis and there's this language that I just, I don't understand and oh, it's like, it's different from my context now and like, yeah, so I was like, I really struggled to enter into um, a time of real intentional reading the word, um, but I desired it for so long and I was like, Lord, this is really hard. Um, I keep wanting to and I keep wanting to be consistent and I keep wanting to have quiet time and all these different things, but I was like, I, I'm not I'm struggling. Um, and then when we were going through Romans at the end of last year, um, there was obviously the opportunity to do it in twos or threes. And I was really interested. So I quickly messaged Taryn, um, uh, Taryn Clothier, and she was like, yes, I'm interested. And then another person from our life group was interested as well to do it. So that's how it came about. Um, so my life in terms of reading the word before was just riddled with inconsistency. Um, and I think a lot of striving in my flesh to want to be good and to want to meet God and like seek him in his word. But it was a struggle because I didn't feel like in my own flesh or by myself, I could do it um, in a way that pleased the Lord. So yeah, and it didn't make me feel good. Okay. And then when you started reading the Bible in twos and threes, how did that change? Yeah, so when we first started doing it, I was like, this is weird. Um, we're not doing it in person. It's like, we do it over like WhatsApp calls and we like decided to do it in the morning. So I'm like, yo, these girls are gonna see like my puffy morning face and like, I'm like in pajamas and like, I haven't had coffee, what's like going on? So I was like, and at the time I was in the middle of my thesis, so I was like, Ugh, this is a lot. Um, but so yeah, it was a bit daunting, I must be honest. I was keen and like earnest, like wanting to do it. But I was also like, okay, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it all the time. And you know, all these questions that you go through in your head. Um, and then we started to do it and we'd like pray before, we'd read the word um, and then we'd discuss it and then we'd pray after. And I started realizing, huh, this is actually making me want to go like research this point that we found in Romans, or this is making me want to like talk to Taryn about this and question this, and let's go back and see what the context was in like this time, and like what does Paul mean by this? Like why is he saying this? And I started to like really sort of itch for the word in a way that I hadn't before, um, and I was like, okay, and with that consistency started to come about, and I was like. It wasn't a thing of now I was doing it in my own flesh. I was doing it knowing that other people were doing it with me, but I was, I wanted to do it. And I, I yeah, I was consumed by the word. That's so amazing. Your brilliant yes. answer. Um, has engaging with the Bible in groups of threes, has it changed your life? Absolutely. So that's what I'm saying. I thought that it was weird because I was like, this is probably not going to 
like do anything like substantial in my life. I thought, oh, this is another thing that we're doing, like to try and get into the word, but it's not actually gonna make a difference. And I realized that there was a deep intimacy that came with unpacking the word with obviously two other people, but in threes, I felt that it greatly paralleled and in a non-arrogant way, it paralleled like the, the Trinity and the Godhead. So I felt like that was a bit good as well. Um, and I felt like it was such a space to be vulnerable and to, to really say like, okay, I don't understand what this is saying. Could you please like unpack it? Or let's like ask someone else or, you know what I mean? So there was a lot of genuine grappling that I felt was done in a safe environment where you could just come and know that like there's no expectation we're all like waking up at seven o'clock in the morning to seek Jesus and he's our desire and he's the thing that we want um and I felt that yeah that intimacy it even transcended because I knew so I knew my life group members um because so the people that I did the bible study with were my life group members so I knew them before but I feel like this fostered a deeper sense of community as well. Like I got to know Taryn better, I got to know Justina better, and it just made the friendship even more. Yeah. Um, I think when I was chatting to you earlier, uh, you had said that you were asking God some questions and you really found that engaging in groups of threes really helped you to answer some of those questions. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yes, so during this time, I remember I had gone to a counseling session with Auntie Stra, also Jubilee offers counseling sessions, guys, go. Um, <laughs> and I went and she said, um, in great love, your feelings have had this, like the final say for a very long time, um, but you haven't given God an opportunity to speak and he speaks through his word, so I was like, Ah, okay, I need to get into this word. Um, so a lot of the questions that I'd had, because I got saved when I was 13, so it had been 10 years, I started to be like, who is this Jesus to me? Not, you know, because I go to church or because I go to life group or because I know other people that are saved. Like, who is this Jesus to me? How is he relevant to my context? How does he speak to me in 2023 slash 2024? How, like, is he... How do I see him? Where is he? What is going on? Um, and how does he know the things that I struggle with? Does he know like who I am? Am I known by him? Like as Psalms 139 speaks about, like what, who is this Jesus? And as we started to unpack the word, it wasn't necessarily through the, the Bible group per se, but it was through the, the active presence of God in the Bible group that I was able to go into his word and he began to answer me. He began to show me who he is. He began to sort of dispel like culture and what I've been told or how I was told to think of God. And he started speaking to me as my God. Um, and I was like, wow, this is crazy. He's like actually with me every single day. Like his watchful eye is over me every single day. Like I'm never apart from God. He's more real to me than you right now sitting here with me. So that was, I think I had, I needed that like reminder. I needed to live in that every day and know that just like he gave the Israelites daily bread in the wilderness, he is my daily bread every single day. Like he is my like rivers of living water. Like he is the source of life. So... Thank you, Lily. Okay. That is amazing. Um, is there anything else that you want to share or add? Yeah, I think I back to what Doug said. It is so vital to do community, guys. I know it's like, it's rough and like, oh my God, I need to go introduce myself to people. Like, do these people even know me? And like, people have their own things. But it matters so greatly to be plugged into a life group. And again, I'm from KZN and I've been in Cape Town for five years. I don't think I would have made it if it wasn't for life group. I don't think I would have made it if it wasn't for church. Um, I my life is a testimony to the power of community. So I cannot encourage you enough. Like God works 
in us and through us. So if you're not present, then you know what I mean? So um, yeah, and there's so much of you that he just wants to share with the world because he knows you so deeply. And there's so much of him that he wants you to know. And you see that most when you do life with people and you get into his word. So please, please, please <laughs> join a life group, come to church, like get into Bible studies, like let it be your daily life. Yeah. If you guys, yeah. If you're not encouraged by that, then there's something wrong with you. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. No and yeah, I really do encourage you to read your Bible in twos and threes and see how it changes your life. <laughs>